Hey Threadheads, welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying something I've been developing over the summer. This one is something I call the Rice Lake 101. 101 being a reference to 101 Dalmatians. And as you can see by the coloration of this fly, you get a little bit of black and white, uh, silver and dark speckling on the finished appearance of this fly. So I've been primarily using this for panfish like bluegill, uh, pumpkin seeds, rock bass, perch, that sort of thing. But it's actually probably going to be a really great uh, chronomid for trout fly fishing in some of the northern lakes as well. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and I'll get you entered into the next draw for some decals and flies. Let's have a look at the material list and get started. Let's get a hook prepared and into the vise. So for this fly today, we're going to be using a fire hole 315 and I've got a uh, tungsten bead with a black nickel finish. Just slide that onto the hook. Get that into the vise. So basically any scud hook will work here. For thread, I'm going to be using something dark. In this case, I'm going to be using a brown olive. UTC uh, 70D and we'll just start by putting a little bit of thread on just to get it established just behind the bead. So we're going to start off by putting on a piece of wire. So for this one I've been using either black or this uh, really cool gunmetal blue from UTC ultra wire and we're using the small size and we're tying on a size 14 hook so we'll generally stay to either the uh, small or the extra small. And let's just tie that in. We'll just kind of push that in under the bead and then we're going to tie the wire down the hook shank. We just want to keep it positioned on the side of the hook and that helps us maintain a consistent body. If you uh, let that wire right up to the top, you kind of get a bit of a kink in the body. We'll take our thread back up to the top. We're going to go grab our next material, which is this silver specked flashaboo. And we're just going to pull out about uh, three or four strands of this. Uh, four looks to be about right. If you're tying a smaller fly, you can use a probably three. And we'll just make sure those tips are evened up. You can see it's got a nice speckled appearance. This is going to kind of tone down on the brightness of it a little bit. We'll just tie those in again right behind the bead. And for this one, we'll keep that on top of the hook shank. And we'll tie that down. And make sure that everything's tied in all together to the same point on the hook. And then we're going to wind our thread back up to behind the bead. And one thing, you can go ahead and finish the fly like this, but I like to add a little bit of a taper in here. So what I do is generally I'll just start with my finger and I'll just kind of set a point on the hook. And I'll wrap my thread down to there and then back up behind the bead. And then I'll move my finger up a couple millimeters and then I'll repeat the process. And what we're doing is basically building a bit of a taper into the body of the fly so every time you have an extra layer of thread it gets a little thicker and uh, you just keep doing that until you're kind of happy with the taper that you've got nothing too dramatic but it gives it a little bit of uh, a taper if you're using a thicker thread you'll obviously achieve that a little bit quicker just put a half hitch or two just to make sure that that thread doesn't pop off while we're wrapping up our body material so we're going to take all four of those flashaboo strands. We want to just kind of make sure that they're um, more or less together. And we'll start wrapping those around the hook shank. 
if they do split like that, that's not too big of a deal. You just want to try and flatten it out and try and get them to roll together as much as possible. And because this is a little bit of a speckled fly, it's not going to be as noticeable if you do happen to miss a spot. So we'll wrap that just in behind the bead and then we'll take our thread. We'll add some wraps to secure that, making sure that we go both in front of the bead and behind the bead or behind the tinsel just to make sure that it's locked in place. And then when you're comfortable with that, we'll just go ahead and trim that off. We'll save that for the next fly. Now we're going to go ahead and wrap our wire body and this will serve two purposes. First it's going to add a little bit of segmentation to the fly and secondly it's going to add a little bit of um, durability to the fly as well. So you can either wrap that along the same route that you wrapped your tinsel body or you can reverse wrap it and if you do a reverse wrap in the opposite direction you'll add even more durability to the fly but i'm not too worried about that because we're actually going to add a coat of uh, bone dry uv resin on this just to lock everything in place so we'll go ahead and tie that wire in making sure again we go on both sides of that then we'll pull it tight and we'll give it a few wiggles to helicopter it off gives you a nice clean break rather than cutting it we'll set that aside for the next one go ahead and we'll whip finish the fly and you can see kind of building up a little bit of a thorax so if you want that to stick out you can use a lighter colored uh, thread here like a brown or a wood duck it's, uh, makes for a nice contrast we'll go ahead and we'll brush on a thin coat of the bone dry UV resin we don't want to go too heavy on that we just want to kind of make sure that we lock everything in place and then we'll zap it with the UV light making sure everything's cured We've got a fresh battery in this one Make sure that you do replace your batteries and your torches every once in a while. And for one final step on this, I'm just going to add a dot of white paint just on top of the bead. And this is in place of adding gills or breathers to it. And it's just more of a representation. So one of the reasons that I kind of created that is just to mimic some of the chronomid larvae that I was seeing or chronomid pupae i've been seeing in the lakes so this is a fairly close representation it might be a little bit darker than the ones we're normally seeing but it seemed to work fairly well just go ahead and give one extra coat on top of that paint after it dries and you're good to go hey fly tires thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos if you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel, and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips, and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.